right, let's go ahead and talk about conductivity, solubility, and concentration. So we'll dive right into conductivity. Now, we need to determine and know what type of compounds conduct electricity. We've already talked about this in um, ionic versus covalent, so let's review. Ionic compounds can conduct electricity, and the reason is because they dissociate completely. So remember, the plus charge element and the minus charge element completely come apart, which means they're freely moving, and electricity can con um, be conducted through that solution. Now, something new we're going to learn, in covalent compounds, we have polar covalent compounds, like we talked about earlier, and nonpolar. And if you'll remember, polar actually has a partial positive and a partial negative charge. So, polar solutions can conduct electricity, and nonpolar solutions are going to have very, very low conductivity. They're not going to conduct electricity very well. Now, let's talk about concentration of solutions. If you have a high concentration, that means you have a very concentrated solution, and that means you have a large amount of solute. So, you just have, it just means a larger amount of solute. If you have a diluted solution, that means you have a small amount of solute, and so you have a low concentration. And so you can think about this as like um, sweet tea that's not sweetened enough. That would be a diluted solution. When you drink it, you say it needs more sugar. A concentrated solution would be that sweet tea that has too much sugar, and it sat in the fridge for a couple of days, um, and it tastes really, really sweet. That would be a concentrated solution. Now, solubility, this is just a definition kind of helping you learn what this is. And remember, soluble, solubility is the ability um, of something to dissolve. And we usually say it's the maximum grams of solute that will dissolve in 100 grams of solvent at a given temperature. And so this varies with temperature, and it's based on a saturated solution. Now, the amount of a substance that can dissolve in a solvent depends on the nature of these substances. So I'm going to give you two examples. For our first example, you have your beaker over here. You have one gram of solute A, and it actually dissolves completely, but additional solute that does not dissolve falls to the bottom of the beaker. Okay, so th there is part of the one gram that dissolves completely, but additional falls to the bottom and collects at the bottom. However, if you have this same solvent, and you have um, the solute, you change the solute, you have one gram of solute B, and it dissolves, and two more grams also dissolve. So it dissolves completely, and then two more grams, you can add two more grams, and they also dissolve before anything falls out of solution and falls to the bottom of the beaker. So if the temperature of the water is the same in both beakers, you can conclude that the substance B is more soluble than substance A because we can add more of it to the solvent. Now, solubility curves. You, are, you have seen these before because when graphing, we looked at these, and you've got to know how to read these and answer questions about these. So each line on the graph is called a solubility curve for a particular substance. The blue line is for sodium chlorate. Red line is for potassium nitrate. Um, purple is for potassium bromide. And green is sodium chloride. Now, you can use the solubility of the curve to figure out how much solute will dissolve at any temperature given on the graph. For instance, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to pause the tape and answer it. Um, at 30 degrees Celsius, which is the least soluble compound? Pause the tape and we'll talk about the answer. All right, the least soluble compound is sodium chloride. Now, um, if we're at 60, gram, or 60 degrees Celsius, what is the most soluble? Pause the video, and then we'll talk about the answer. The most soluble at 60 degrees Celsius is going to be sodium chlorate. So just make sure you remember these, you review these, 
and we'll do um, some practice in class as well. Now, we have types of solutions. The first one is a saturated solution. And when I say types of solutions, this is talking about concentrations. So a saturated solution is a solution that contains all the solute it can hold at a given temperature. So that means everything has dissolved and it can't hold any more solute. And this table is going to show you the amounts of a few solutes that can dissolve in 100 grams of water at different temperatures. So if you look over here, like copper sulfate, at 0 degrees Celsius, you can dissolve 23.1. At 20 degrees Celsius, you can dissolve 32 um, grams. And at 100 degrees, you can dissolve 114 grams of um, copper 2 sulfate. And so this just kind of shows you the solubility. Now, this means if we were at 0 degrees Celsius and I had 25 grams of copper 2 sulfate, I would have more than the saturated solution, so I would have a super saturated solution. If I had exactly 23.1 grams, I would have a saturated solution. And then if I had something like 20 grams of copper 2 sulfate, that would mean I could add more solute at 0 degrees Celsius, and I would have had an unsaturated solution. Now, an unsaturated solution is any solution that can take more solute and still dissolve it at a given temperature. And so each time a saturated solution is heated to a higher temperature, it actually becomes unsaturated. On our last chart, did you see how we, when we increase temperature, you could increase the amount of solute? So anytime you have um, a saturated solution and you need to add more solute, then you heat up the solution to allow it to become unsaturated so you can add more solute to the solvent. Now, supersaturated solutions. A supersaturated solution is one that contains more solute than it can actually dissolve. And um, supersaturated solutions are unstable. Okay? And as you can see over here to the right, this picture, this is the saturated solution. And as you can see, if you can see right here, they have a little crystal of a little bit more of the solute. Once this is um, saturated, if they put any more solute into it, do you see the crystal start to form? It means that the solution starts to crystallize. And so that's a super saturated solution. And so this is the same picture. And what they're using is sodium acetate. And if they have a seed crystal that exceeds the amount that can um, be soluble, then it starts to crystallize out. Now, concentration. This is just a review. Unsaturated solution means that you need more solute because you can actually dissolve more solute. Saturated solution means no more solute can dissolve. Okay? So, um, the these little cubes are just kind of representing that you've already got as much as possible, and if you had extra than that, it would float to the bottom, right? Um, and so you're increasing concentration as you go through these steps. This is the least concentrated. This is the, highly, uh, the most highly concentrated. And a supersaturated solution start, crystal start to form because you've added way too much solute. Um, now, one way to remember this is, like we used earlier, T. Unsaturated tea is like, or unsaturated solution is like unsweet tea. Saturated solution is like the perfect sweet tea. And super saturated solution is like super sweet tea, like too much sugar. All right, this finishes this video. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to take either solution or concentration, you can choose which one, and make an acronym out of it, which means that every letter in that word becomes um, an important thing to remember about this video. Okay, so go ahead and do that with either solution or concentration. I hope you have a great evening, and I'll see you in class.